What's up everyone? Welcome back to One More Guitar. Today I want to make a video that you guys have been asking me about. I'm going to compare the Epiphone Les Paul 59 Standard to the Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the similarities and the differences between these two guitars and then I'm going to play them back to back so you can hear what the tones sound like out of each of them and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So let's get going. <laughs> talk about the similarities between these two guitars. So first we'll just mention the general stuff. I mean of course they're both Les Pauls. They both have two humbuckers, four controls, a switch. You know they both have perloid trapezoid inlays. They both have binding on the fretboard and they both use Cluson style tuners. Another thing I want to mention are these pickups. These pickups both come from the same family. They're both Gibson USA pickups and they're both sets of burst bucker pickups. So um, there are some differences in regards to which pickups they used, but like I said, they're both Gibson burst bucker pickups in each of these guitars. The next thing I want to mention are the electronics. Both of these guitars come with very high-end electronics in here. All quality parts, USA made, CTS potch, Switchcraft switch, very nice output jacks. Um, the electronics in this Epiphone are some of the best I've ever had in an import guitar, and I really don't think they could get any better. So you got the same electronics basically in this guitar too, but uh, you know, high quality stuff in this Epiphone, very similar. And then the last similarity I want to mention is the neck profile of each of these guitars. Just feeling them in my hands, I can tell that the Gibson profile is just a little bit thicker than the Epiphone, but they are very similar. It's a little fatter, but they're very comparable. Um, if you like thinner necks, you might, you know, lean towards the Epiphone between these two, but like I said, this neck is still pretty thick and they both feel about the same. I want to talk about the differences between these two guitars. And the obvious thing to mention first is the price. This Epiphone is about $850 and this Gibson is about $2,700. So the Gibson is nearly $2,000 more than the Epiphone. And let's see if we can figure out why. Now the first thing I'll mention are the woods. The wood used on the Gibson guitar is better than the wood used on the Epiphone guitar. But what does that even mean? I do believe that the woods used in a guitar have some effect on the way the guitar sounds, but I feel like that differs from guitar to guitar, even in Gibson's lineup and maybe even with the same model with two different guitars. So I can't say that Gibson's wood is always going to sound better than Epiphone's wood, but what I can say is that Gibson's wood does usually look better than Epiphone's wood. I do believe as far as looks go, Gibson does use a higher quality wood. Um, you can see that the flame in this looks much better than the veneer looks on this guitar, even though the veneer looks pretty decent. Uh, the true maple wood with the real flame in it just looks better. And the same is true with the mahogany on the back. You can see that the mahogany on the Gibson has a lot more figuring to it. It has a lot more grain in it, and the same is true with the neck, whereas the Epiphone just looks a lot more plain. I can't really say any more than that about the wood, but I will say that the Gibson wood looks a lot better. The next difference I want to talk about with these two guitars is the finish. The Gibson comes with a nitrocellulose lacquer finish, where the Epiphone comes with what they call an aged gloss finish. And the aged gloss finish feels a little bit more played in and looks a little bit more played in than a brand new nitro lacquer finish. Now, nitro finishes have a reputation for being a little sticky, especially when they're brand new. Now when you play one of these guitars and wear it in some, that stickiness goes away. But when you get a brand new guitar with a nitro finish, the neck is usually kind of sticky to play. And comparing that to the way the age gloss feels, this is much less sticky. Like I mentioned earlier, this feels like it's been played in a little bit and the neck does not feel sticky even though it's a brand new guitar. So that's the difference. Now some of the fun of having a nitro guitar is wearing it in yourself. That way the guitar wears in exactly where you play it and it becomes kind of personal to you. So that's one cool thing about a nitro finish, but you know, you do have that intro period where it's very sticky. And since the Epiphone came with the polyurethane finish, it will never wear. What you see out of the box is what you get. This is the way this guitar will always look, unless you damage it in some way, but you know, if you take care of it, this guitar is never gonna age, whereas this guitar will. Some people like that, some people don't like that. So there's some differences about the finish to note. All right, one of the next major differences I'll mention is the quality of the hardware on the Epiphone versus the Gibson. 
One of the typical things that companies will do to cut cost is to use pop metal on import guitars for their hardware. And this is a metal alloy that's just a little bit softer than the pure metals that Gibson uses for their hardware. So from the screws, to the bridge, to the tailpiece, to the tuners, everything is going to be just a little bit higher quality on the Gibson. All right, the next thing I'll mention real quick is the weight of these two guitars. The Gibson does weigh a little bit more. If I remember correctly, this was 8 pounds, 12 ounces, and this one was about 9 pounds, 5 ounces. Um, again, this is going to vary from example to example, but something I wanted to mention that the Gibson is a little bit heavier. The next difference I want to mention with these two guitars is the fretwork. The Gibson guitars come plecked, and that means that they're put through a machine to cut and measure the frets to make them very accurate. The Gibson also comes with fret nibs, which is going to cover up the ends of the frets so you don't feel them when you're running your hand up and down the fretboard. Um, the Epiphone does not come with fret nibs, nor is it plecked, and I say that when I got it, the fret ends weren't too bad, but I ended up getting a little bit of fret sprout on this guitar, so I did have to do some work to make the frets a little smoother and the guitar a little more playable. So that's something to mention that the fret work on the Gibson is definitely better. Another thing I'll mention about these necks is that the Gibson is a one-piece mahogany neck, whereas the Epiphone actually has scarf joints at the headstock and at the heel. So it's not a one-piece neck. Now that may or may not matter to you, it hasn't made any difference to me as far as playability of the guitars go, but it is a spec difference and some people care about that, so I did want to mention it. Another quick thing to mention on these guitars are the strap buttons. You can tell that the strap buttons on the Epiphone are a little bit smaller than the strap buttons on the Gibson, so these are a little nicer on the Gibson. Another big difference with these two guitars is the fretboard material. The Epiphone comes with Indian Laurel, whereas the Gibson comes with Rosewood. Now, I like Indian Laurel, and I don't think it looks as good as Rosewood, but it's pretty close. But that's something else that's just a spec difference that may matter to somebody, and it's worth noting. Another difference we have to talk about between these two guitars is simply the name and the headstock. Um, it may matter to you, it may not matter to you. The only thing that I can really say about this is that Gibsons seem to hold their value a little bit better and actually appreciate in value somewhat, whereas Epiphones will hold their value, maybe lose a little bit. Um, so when it comes to resale, I think that the Gibson name does matter to some degree, but as far as playing the guitars go, that's going to be up to you if you care if your guitar says Gibson or not. And the last difference I want to talk about is maybe one of the most important differences to me and one of the hardest to quantify and to explain to you. I call this the Gibson Chirp, so let me see if I can demonstrate this. I'm going to put the mic really close to the guitar here, and let's see if you can hear the chirp. All right, I'm going to play the note, and then I'm going to try to cut it off and see if you can hear how it rings after the note stops. There's just this bright ring behind the note that really makes this guitar sing. So let's see if we can compare that to the way that it sounds on the Epiphone. Hopefully you can tell that that is way more muted than it was on the Gibson. So that's the chirp, and the Epiphones just don't have the same kind of chirp that the Gibsons have to me. And I do feel like that that's part of what you're paying for. That fullness of the note really translates all over the guitar when you play chords and stuff like that. It does make a difference in the sound. Alright, the next thing I want to do is plug these two guitars in and do a sound comparison to see what they sound like next to each other. So we'll plug these Les Pauls directly into a Marshall just as God intended. And we will go through clean, crunch, and gain, and we'll just see how they sound in comparison to each other. And we'll do this as a blind test. So we'll check this out. We'll have guitar A and B, and see if you can figure out which one's which.
Okay, so let's go over the results. Guitar A was the Epiphone, and Guitar B was the Gibson. So let me know in the comments if you got that right, and then let me know what you heard between these two different guitars. So what do I think about these two guitars now that I've played them together for this video? Well, I'm a little surprised by the answer. The Epiphone really showed up to the game. Listening back to the sound samples, I didn't really hear that much of a difference to my ear, and as far as playing them goes, I have to say that the Epiphone is more comfortable in my hands. You know, I mentioned the neck profile when I was talking about similarities, but when it came to actually playing them back to back, I could definitely tell that the Gibson neck profile was a little thicker and it was affecting my playing a little bit. I had to play the sound samples a little bit more on the Gibson, do a few extra takes just to make sure I got it right, and I can uh, attribute that only to the neck profile. So I thought that was interesting once I actually played them together. Another thing about the Gibson is it's just a little bit more heavy, and I didn't think that was going to be a big deal, but when it's sitting on your leg, I have to say that it's really bottom heavy. I feel like the extra weight is all right here, and so the guitar really seems to slide. And this guitar has that a little bit, but it's not nearly as bad. I felt myself constantly adjusting this guitar when I was playing it. It just it really wants to slide off of my leg. Now, if you're standing up, that's not going to be a problem, but I will say sitting down, again, the Epiphone was more comfortable to play. All right, so now let's talk about a few things I prefer about the Gibson. The first thing I'll say is the looks. I think that the full maple cap looks way better than the veneer, and just the quality of the woods they used on this guitar just has a lot more grain and stuff, and it just overall looks better than the wood used on the Epiphone. Another thing I prefer about the Gibson is that chirp. Hopefully you could tell in that section that the notes ring out more on the Gibson. I do think this makes the guitar sound better. The $2,000 better? I'll let you make that call. I also think that the Gibson has a collectability factor that the Epiphone doesn't have. The Gibson's kind of like a work of art, whereas the Epiphone is like a really useful tool. But when it comes to getting a job done, I have to say it is pleasantly surprising how well this Epiphone stands up to the Gibson. Um, it does get the job done. It's a great sounding guitar and it offers to me a lot more bang for your buck than the Gibson does. All right, and the last thing I want to note about this is that making this video has made me ask myself some really tough questions. Why do I need this guitar? Should I sell this guitar? I'm not sure, but I will say that the Epiphone really was more comfortable to play to me and I feel like the sound was on par. Now I've always wanted a Gibson Les Paul, but I feel like that if I do sell this guitar, I'm really going to have to find something that blows this one away before I buy another one. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Once I compared them back to back, I found that they're really not that different as far as what you get out of them. So that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. It really helps the video get out to more people. And until next time, take it easy and keep playing.